Hi, Dr. Galani. So here we are at the end of a long day and uh, again energized as all my radial keratotomy patients, three months post-op called and they're ecstatic with their vision. Uh, I keep getting addicted to you guys, uh, to anything I can do for you. And today's topic among the questions you'll have posed to us is, about, is how do you select your eye surgeon or how do you uh, cut to the chase with the advertising hype as opposed to a doctor who's actually performing the results. So number one I always like to say is meet with the doctor or the surgeon because anybody who wants to help a radial keratotomy patient is already up to a noble cause. So please open your minds and uh, go by and meet these doctors and sit down and chat with them. So appreciate the fact that someone wants to help you. Two, be very direct with your questions. You want to know who else besides them thinks that they are an expert in this field and always ask for beyond the local geography. How many patients have they done? It has to be thousands of patients or decades of work. And where is this documented? Uh, also ask, where are your surgeries for other doctors to learn or critique? Online, there are so many forums now, where as a surgeon, when you're doing techniques that are ahead of time or fixing things that most people say cannot be done, those surgeries should be transparently available of that particular surgeon that you can evaluate or your doctors can evaluate. Then ask them where do they teach. Shouldn't be a local restaurant or a local place with one or two people. It should be at the American Academy, European Congress, international conferences, worldwide podiums, because that's a testimony to what your colleagues think about you as they invite you to speak and teach all over the world. Also look for publications. Publications are of many kinds. Doctors get interviewed if they are leaders in their field in various trade journals, also in publication magazines and publication media nowadays, which is so much of which is online, which is also very important and vital. Then there are white papers. Now white papers on radial keratotomy uh, cases are more difficult to find as a series of cases and here is why. As prospective studies, a lot of studies were done back in the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s, where it was easy to do a study because those were done by let's say a single surgeon. So if they cut a uh, 100 patients with a four cut RK, it's easy to study that concept. What's the results and what's the incidence and uh, perspectives or predictions. But in a case like ours, um, I know this from personal experience, having tried to publish our data, it becomes very difficult because every patient who comes here, every eye, not even the patients, but between two eyes of the same patient, each eye is so uniquely different that you cannot put that data as predictive. And though I'm blessed with the results I've had with all severities of radial keratotomy patients that I've dealt with over decades now, three decades, that's what makes it difficult to bring out all that data as a white paper. For example, think about this. If, uh, as I said to you, if the paper was done prospectively 20 years ago by a doctor who was doing RK surgeries, I don't do RK surgeries. And they could have produced a data base and that could be predictive or how will these patients do in the future? But for me, every patient who's coming today has associated issues. They may have associated cataract, they may have undergone LASIK on their RK, they may have had PRK on top, cross-linking, trauma, pseudo-exfoliation, associated diseases. So let's say a same four-cut RK patient who comes to me, that same four-cut RK eye now can have associated issues that totally makes it different. For example, like I just said, they could have these associated diseases, additional surgeries, ongoing age-related pathologies, cataract, macular degeneration, etc. So that changes predictability. Therefore, when we tried to produce our data to give it out to publication, it became very difficult. It's easier to publish a case report. But because I do so many of these corrections, each case report can be such an easy thing for us to do, so I took a very difficult route. I put every patient of mine on camera. And despite these patients being so intelligent, demanding, skeptical, and profoundly accomplished in their life, meaning very busy, they took the time to be on video before surgery to show how intense the diagnostics are and time we have to spend with them. During surgery, immediately post-surgery, day one post-surgery, and then years and decades post-surgery when they come back for follow-up. So I took that route to share not only uh, hope for patients, but also hopefully inspiring and encouraging my colleagues, ophthalmologists, optometrists, and all care levels of RK providers to still step up and believe that RK patients can see. 
So that's another aspect you have to look for. Where is the data published or written about? Very important, don't look for advertising. If it's only the doctors advertising that's saying that they're great, that's not the right thing you're looking for. You're looking for third party confirmation. Then you want to know the track record of the doctor and ability. RK corrections, the way I've been doing it, you have to have comprehensive holistic skills. Not only do you need to be a refractive surgeon to be able to do laser plastic on RK cuts of the cornea, you also should know lensoplastic to work on their cataracts and lenses. You additionally should be an ocular surface specialist so you can treat their associated dry eyes and ocular surface. So, and a corneal surgeon in case they need lamellar transplants or foundation building on the cornea. So you have to have all these abilities to holistically approach any level of radial keratotomy severity and you're not handicapped or you're not giving the patient just limited level of uh, work or correction because you're unable. So make sure the doctor is a corneal surgeon, is a refractive surgeon and a cataract surgeon all in one and holistically along with ocular surface management. So in summary, if any eye surgeon you find, whether through their advertising or something, are helping RK patients, keep an open heart and open mind, go meet them. Uh, believe in giving them the benefit of doubt, but do ask direct questions. Who else besides you thinks you're an expert? Two, what levels of national international podiums you teach at? Where are publications or articles written about you? Not advertising, written about you by others. And who else is referring, do eye surgeons refer their problem real keratotomy patients or complications to you? You need that track record. And then most important, ask for where their patients are. Where are the testimonials? What are they saying? Again, not paid incentivized testimonials where patients are saying things. Lend the in-depth testimonials of patients and that to hundreds or at least thousands and over the years, over decades. And again, important, not just limited to the small geographic area, but worldwide if possible, at least nationwide, if not at least statewide. So if you follow these systems, you can pretty much zero down to the doctors and separate advertising from reality, right? So believe in your doctors who are trying to help you. Please give them the chance to help you. I absolutely believe you all can see real keratotomy patients can be helped. And there are over 40 different techniques and combinations, unlimited lens implant choices. I'll talk about that in my next video for you. So again, it's the end of a long day. I'm about to leave for home and uh, I had a pleasure of speaking to all my RK patients three months post-op today. What's the date, all of them, uh, the blessings and uh, the gratitude that I received just keeps me going uh, again for you, Dr. Kamal.